Hi, I'm Rob Johnstone from Woodworkers Journal Magazine, and this is the concluding project in our Woodworking Basics series, where we take the techniques that you learned in the previous project and apply them to the next one. Think of this wall cabinet as your graduation project. Let's get started. Our last project was this wall shelf. And you can see some similarities between that and this wall cabinet. There's these cross pieces that are joined to the sides. But on this project, we've got a door that we hang on hinges and we've got a bit of trim. I've cut the sides, top and bottom to length as I've demonstrated in our previous projects and sanded them smooth. But before we put these pieces together, we need to drill some holes for shelf pins. This jig from Rockware makes it easy to do. Shelf pins or supports are a handy way to hold a shelf in place. These fit into a quarter inch diameter hole. Center the jig on the side and decide how many holes you want and use some tape to mark it off. Drill the first hole with a special bit and then drill the rest of the holes. With these holes drilled now, I'm gonna join all these pieces together with pocket hole joinery. This technique is a fast and strong way to join end to face grain. The jig requires a special bit that comes with the setup. You also need special pocket hole screws. The people at Craig who make this system make it very easy to use. This version adjusts for the thickness of the wood automatically, in our case, three quarters of an inch. You do need to set the stop collar on the drill bit for three quarters of an inch stock as well. Easy peasy. In our case, I placed the five inch wide stock aligned with one side of the jig, clamp it in place and bore the hole. Then I move over to the center drill guide and bore that hole. Shift the board to the other side of the jig, bore the hole, and now I have three pocket holes ready to go. Now I just complete the rest. pocket holes ready to go, I'm going to use these special screws, which I described earlier, to join the horizontal to the vertical elements. Notice that I use these clamp it clips from Rockler to align the carcass parts. They are super handy. I'm adding a clamp here to hold the pieces in position more securely. In addition to the special screws, driving the pocket hole screws home requires a long bit like this one. Now. Just drive the screws into the sides. Notice that I attached the top three quarters of an inch down from the top edges of the side. We'll add some trim later. The last piece that goes into the carcass is this nailing or hanger strip. When you mount the cabinet to the wall, you're gonna be driving screws through this to secure it. I cut this piece to fit just as we did in the wall shelf video. To secure it in the cabinet, I once again used pocket hole joinery and then also drove screws down from the top into the strip. So that's it. We've basically completed the carcass. We'll add some decorative trim around the top here later on, but now we're moving on to the door. Once again, I cut the pieces to their proper length and with square ends as we've done in each of our projects in this series. We're gonna create a door frame. The parts of the door that go up and down vertically are called styles. The parts that run side to side are called rails. Typically, styles run the complete height of the door and rails are captured between them. This is not always true, but it is very common. I'm going to use dowels to join the styles to the rails in a similar manner to how I use them in the small table project. As I mentioned before in the other projects, it's super important to do a dry fit without glue to make sure that all your parts fit. <laughs> Once I'm sure that everything fits properly, it's time to glue and clamp them together. Be sure to allow the glue time to cure. So the glue has cured and I've sanded the frame smooth and ready for finish. Now we need to hang the door like we did this one. And to do that, we're gonna use Euro style cup hinges. In fact, we're going to use this Bloom full overlay soft closing hinge. So what does all that mean? Well, the cup part is easy to understand, and you just saw the soft close feature. 
and the full overlay describes how the door fits onto the cabinet. It completely overlays the edges of the carcass. There are also partial overlay doors and inset doors. Installing the hinges and hanging the door is made much easier with the jigs I'll be using. First, we need to locate where the hinges will be on the door and the cabinet. It's not really critical, so I'm putting them four inches to the inside of the cabinet opening. Now that we have the locations, I'm grabbing the deluxe hinge drilling jig from Rockler. I'll line up the drilling guides to the lines on the door and lock them and the jig in place. With a long shank 32 millimeter bit installed in the drilling shroud, I can drill the hinge pockets. The shroud has a stop collar that controls the proper depth of the hole. Move to the next guide and drill the hole and you will be ready to install the hinge cups. Two screws hold the cups in place. Use a square to make sure they don't rotate out of position. Now to install the hinge plates. And once again, a simple jig will make this a snap. Take the jig at template A and line it up on one of the pencil marks you made earlier on the carcass. With this self-centering drill bit, bore the pilot holes for the screws. Do it again on the other line and you're ready to install the plates. The cup hinges on the door just snap into place. Close the door and see how it's fitting. Adjust the hinges to ensure it fits properly. Test how it swings and closes. We're pretty close to being done. There's just four steps left that we need to do. First is to uh, attach the trim to the top of the carcass. Second is to cut the plywood panel, quarter inch plywood panel, and the shelf. And the last is to apply the finish of your choice. Cut two pieces of the quarter inch by one and a half inch wide mahogany to five inches long. Glue and clamp them to the sides seven eighths of an inch down from the top. While the glue is curing, go ahead and cut the plywood shelf and the door panel to size. Take a moment to sand them smooth. Now grab the remaining trim stock and cut it to length, glue and clamp it in place. Then mark out and drill eight pilot holes on the door panel. All that remains is deciding on a finish and deciding on a pull. I chose to use the same paint and oil finish as I used on the wall shelf. If that is your wish, I'd take the panel off and give it two coats of paint. Mask off the trim and give it a couple of coats too. Then apply the oil and you are done. Congratulations, you've made it through our four part series and are now a woodworker indeed. In today's project, you learned how to make pocket hole joints, drill shelf pin holes, and most impressively, hang a cabinet door. With these skills and all the techniques you've mastered in the last three projects, you can be confident and continue down the path of advancing your woodworking chops. Very impressive. I'm Rob Johnstone from Woodworker's Journal. Keep on making sawdust.